Hey everyone, my name's Sydney Sozio, and you're watching The Quarantine Classroom. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about experiments by Nuremberg, Mathieu, and Leder. First up is Nuremberg and Mathieu's PolyU experiment, another set of geneticists inspired by the Watson and Crick's double helix experiment. However, this did bring a great question. How could just four nucleotides determine the codes for so many different proteins? These two got to work. They set up 20 different test tubes filled with E. coli cytoplasm. 19 of them were normal and one of them was hot with a radioactive amino acid in it. Synthetic RNA was added to the test tubes and the radioactive test tube was checked for radioactivity. If there was a reaction between the RNA and the amino acid in the test tube, it would produce a radioactive protein. Measuring this radioactivity would tell them if there was any activity going on in the test tube. One night, Mathieu added PolyU, which is a synthetic RNA made up of only uracil, to the radioactive test tube when it had phenylalanine in it, and he noticed a reaction occurring. To put it simply, the control tubes had about 70 counts per milligram of protein after an hour, while the radioactive phenylalanine tube had 38,000 counts. That's a lot of protein. This showed that a chain of repeating uracil created a protein chain made up of only phenylalanine. Thus, UUU became the first codon ever deciphered. Nuremberg and his team continued to study the genetic code, and a few years later, him and one of his other teammates, Leader, used a triplet binding assay to decode the triplet mRNA sequences that could code for each amino acid. They essentially passed different combinations of mRNA through a filter with ribosomes and tRNA on it. The ribosomes bound the mRNA and tRNA based on the mRNA's code, and then the tRNA that was paired stuck to the filter and the unbound tRNA passed through it. This way, you could see which amino acid was bound and which combination of codons created each amino acid. Based on the video here, now would be a fun time to mention that almost every article I read about Nuremberg while doing research for this had to mention he was young, inexperienced, and liked to have fun. A lot of emphasis was placed on the fact that he liked to have fun. Just as any scientist would, they published their work and became really super famous for it. Nuremberg even won a Nobel Prize for his work in genetics. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you all, and by you all, I mean literally just my genetics professor, on Saturday.